Hello, this is Andrew Klein. Today I have a video tutorial for you on modeling a skeleton. This is part one of this series. Uh, there are three parts to the series. Uh, in this part, we're going to take a look at modeling a single vertebrae. Uh, we'll then move on to creating the full spine and then finally a rib cage. Uh, you'll see in this demo file, I already have set up uh, orthographic image views from the back, front, and side. Uh, I've also created a uh, just mock outline uh, of these shapes using a couple of polygon cubes. I've templated that down so I just have a good idea of how this will end up looking when I space it all out. I've gone ahead and created a single cube uh, using create polygon primitives cube. Uh, I've got my move tool settings here open as well and I'm going to be using reflection in my move tool settings. Uh, I've also created one division down the center of this cube and uh, that's going to help me keep symmetrical around that center line. I'm going to start off by moving some of these vertices into place uh, just to kind of trace the general shape of this one vertebrae. Uh, in the next video in the series I'll be duplicating this vertebrae and creating the rest of the spine. So for right now just a single vertebrae. I also have this uh, image I'm working with here on the side. Uh, it kind of shows what thoracic and lumbar vertebrae uh, look like from both side and top down angles. And I'm just using this to help get a better perspective of what I'm modeling as I'm going on here. So in addition to the orthographic images, I am using that image source. I'm going to go ahead and insert a couple of extra edge loops in here with uh, the Edit Mesh Insert Edge Loop tool. And I'm going to move the new vertices into place. Again, just trying to round out the form. You can see I'm making use of uh, the sort of drag select the marquee select uh, just to get all those vertices to the center and help round this out. I'm also going to soften my normals on this just so it looks a little bit less cube like as I go. Uh, and I'm going to insert some more edge loops in this direction uh, and that's going to allow me to round this out even further. I'll grab some faces in the face component mode, pull those out to the side uh, and again start rounding this little disc out. Now, using the Insert Edge Loop tool here, I can put new edge loops in, but I want to work symmetrically. So instead, uh, I'm going to modify the way this tool works to evenly space out the edge loops, um, changing how the tool works in the Tool Settings window. This will make sure when I cut new edge loops, they're directly through the center of those divisions, and that way I can continue to work symmetrically without having to create a duplicate instance. You notice I still have a relatively low poly form here. There's you know barely any polygons in this model, and uh, the reason for that is that I like to keep things as simple as possible for as long as I can. Uh, this is going to allow me very easily to uh, take this form and extrude out of it, and only have to worry about one face, as you see here. So I selected this face and I hit uh, Edit Mesh Extrude, and I'm trying to extrude out this section, which kind of hugs where the nerves for the spinal column are. Uh, this could allow me to transition back towards the uh, back section of the vertebrae. I'm going to take these pieces, just push them back a little bit, and I'm going to delete that sort of open hole here because I want to bridge this off. I want to make a little loop. Uh, and I'm going to use the Append Polygon tool to do this, uh, clicking from one edge to another and hitting Enter when I'm done to complete the connection. Uh, and that creates this little loop. It kind of looks like a luggage handle right now. But when I insert some edge loops, and I use the Insert Edge Loop Multiplier for that, putting in four at once, uh, you'll notice I can get a more rounded surface pretty easily by pushing these around just a little bit. You 
You notice as well that I'm continuously softening my normals and also deleting my history as I work through this. Uh, you'll also notice here at this point I was testing out uh, what my smooth preview looks like. Uh, when I'm done with this, I'm going to be using a smooth preview of the form uh, instead of using this uh, low poly version. Uh, and I'm testing that out by hitting 3 on the keyboard while in object mode. Uh, I can return to sort of the low poly cage view just by hitting 1. Uh, and so that was sort of my first test of this. I'll come back and uh, smooth this out for real when I'm done here in a minute. I'm going to extrude out these final forms and move the vertices again, tracing um, to the edge of the vertebrae. Uh, jump into the wireframe mode. I hit 4 on the keyboard. Uh, I'll work back and forth between wireframe and smooth shaded as I go. Uh, hotkeys 4 and 5. Now again, I'm moving these vertices around. Um, when I don't have enough, that's when I'll insert a new edge loop. And uh, you see here I needed to do that just so I can round out this section. I can extrude out the back part of this and I'll rotate as I extrude uh, and add in an edge loop to uh, here as well just to again complete this and get that dip that I need. Extrude down a little bit. There's an edge loop. You notice it's still a very blocky form and that's okay. It's not a lot of detail here. Uh, I'm trying to get the basic shape in and I'm gonna sort of push this all around uh, once I've got smooth preview turned on and really sort of find my final form from that. Vertebrae themselves aren't very complex objects. It's essentially a you know cube in the center with this little hook at the end, the little sort of baggage handle part. Extrude out the sides of this as well, one face at a time, and just scale in a little bit. And push this down. And I'll need to insert another edge loop through here as well to get this dipping uh, properly, also. So I'm going to kind of reset my tool setting here just so I only have one edge loop cutting this time. Uh, and uh, there we go. And now I can move that down as well. Still have reflection on, that's why this is all moving correctly. That's looking a little too fat on the side, it's more like wings than anything else. So I've got to taper this in a bit. And here's my smooth preview. Uh, I've hit three. Um, on the keyboard while this was selected. And you can see it's um, looking a whole lot more rounded now, obviously. And this is closer to the way that I want my final form to uh, look when it's rendered. Uh, and you should note that if you try and render in Maya software with this, it will just render the low poly cage. But if you're rendering using Mental Ray, this is what you'll get. And so since I intend on using Mental Ray as my renderer, um, this is a perfectly fine way to work. Uh, so I'm just going to push my cage around a little bit here more. Uh, opening up some space in there based on what I see in the reference images that I have. The hole where the um, nerve column should be is a little bit rounder than what I originally had. I'm going to tuck some of this in just a little bit so I get that overhang and lip properly. And these are sort of some of the final changes I'll make here before I'm done. So this pretty much concludes my creating a vertebrae tutorial. Uh, I have a part two, if you check it out on YouTube or if you find it in my accompanying playlist. Uh, that will cover how to use uh, duplicate based on curve uh, to create the entire spinal column. So I hope you check it out. Uh, this is Andrew Klein for more videos. Please, please visit uh, kleinmakelearngood.com. Thank you.